Yo, he gets in here and <laughs> yo. Yo, here guys in here and here we go. It's my anime review of episode 921. Thank you for tuning in. I'm almost at the end of catching up with the anime. I think I've got about 10 episodes left. Let's get into this episode. A good episode with good pacing and good build up. It's a little bit of a slow build up and I don't normally like slow build up. But in this episode it was done well because it was condensed into one episode. And it was building up towards the reveal of Kurumurasaki. And I love how it starts off, you know. It starts off, it's teasing her, and it's very wano. It's very wano. You got the music and the sound effects, and like as she steps, her like earrings are like making that clinging sound and everything, and the sound of her massive shoes clinking on the floor or clopping on the floor. The iconic Sakura petals falling, the colours, the flower capital, the people in the crowd cheering and everything looking on the silhouette of her her pattern coming through on the kimono like the peacock and then seeing that turn into the background it was gorgeous and every now and then it would like cut away to like udon prison or and show you like the contrast between like the flower capital and then and then cut into other little stories and it all built up nice towards this ending but i forgot how after all of that build up you finally see her and you're like Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> what a bitch. Like, I I'm not going to get too much into the stuff with, like, the old man and all of that flashback and everything, how she took all of his money. Because if, if you've read the manga like me, you know all of this stuff. It wasn't a surprise to you. But I did forget how much it twists around and makes you kind of hate her a little bit. Because all throughout the episode and the bit the episode before, it was like, everybody loves her. You know, she's so beautiful. She's the most beautiful person in Wano. I can't wait to see her. Her procession is coming. Let's go see people in the crowd smiling, cheering, fainting when they see her. And then you finally see her and you hear those words that she says and you just think, my God, I hate you. What an absolute bitch. Like, you see her and she's like, I spent all of that money. You're like, ah, oh, my heart. I don't like poor people. Ow! And she goes, men are just tools for me to get money. Ow! Oh, I can relate. I know that feeling. You kind of feel for these guys and you hate her. And it's brilliant. Such a genius little twist. Very well teased. We also get Orochi teased in this or what he looks like, what his devil fruit looks like. We see that silhouette, that silhouette that we saw in the manga with his multiple dragon heads. And I remember when this came out in the manga, there was a lot of speculation as to what Devil Fruit has Orochi actually got. Because we were like, well, obviously it looks like he's got a zone. He's got a Yamato Orochi, like a Hydra-like dragon. But then a lot of people were thinking, is it going to be that? Is it going to be another mythical? Or is it actually like some kind of Logia and he's just making it look like dragons? That's why it's, you see it in silhouette. Is it his hair and he's like controlling his hair? But no, the anime here, it does that and then it's like straight up, no, it's a zone because you see it here, you can see, you can see his dragony necks. And I was actually really surprised by his voice here. His voice was a lot deeper than I was expecting, because I was expecting it to be a little bit more goofy. So it's kind of cool that it's a little bit deeper. Like, I wasn't expecting it. I have to kind of see him and the voice again, I think, to kind of see how it goes. But yeah, it's good that it's a little bit deeper. It does make him a little bit more intimidating. Because if he was a little bit more goofy, if he was a little bit more like, oh, hey, I'm a Orochi, I'm the sh a Shogun of Wano. I don't think it would have had, I don't think it would come off quite as well. He won't be quite as intimidating, especially when you, uh, especially when you see uh, his actual devil fruit later on. I mentioned Udon Prison earlier on. We do go to Udon Prison in this and we see Luffy and we see Caribou. Caribou is back in there after his little tease in the previous episodes. And we get a little bit more backstory with him. We see him trying to like kind of get on Luffy's good side. Basically kissing his butt. In one shot he was essentially licking his back. And he's trying to like get in Luffy because he thinks that Luffy is going to escape. And that if he's ally with Luffy, Luffy will help him get out. And we got a little flashback here as to who Caribou was. I was like, oh really? Well, I guess, you know, we haven't seen him in a while. So I was like, fine, I'll endure it. But then it went into the manga cover story, which was great. Was not expecting that. The anime hardly ever does the manga cover stories. So it was great to see here. It didn't really go into detail of it. It just flashed up on the screen and was just like, Caribou, Caribou went into the new world and went on some adventures, essentially. But uh, here's like a quick little abridged version of it, so... After what happened in Fishman Island, Jimby kicks him out. Great to see Jimby again. And then he ends up in the New World. And eventually, after some stuff with the Marines, he ends up on this island and kind of gets 
involved in this revolutionary army thing where he kind of gets mistaken identity for this other guy who was like the leader. During that he gets attacked by Scotch, one of Kaido's men, and Caribou actually defeats him, which is really, really cool. And then as they're celebrating, X-Drake turns up, drags him off to Udon prison, and that's how he's here. If you had read the manga, you would have known that Caribou would have been in Wano, which is probably why when it came out here in the manga, uh, in the anime, sorry, he was just kind of there in the background, because if you'd read the manga, you would have known that. But because they didn't adapt the cover stories, we didn't get that, so... That's kind of why they had the flashback here, but it was really, really good to see. I'm glad that they did that. And, and it looked like the actual covers themselves had just been like coloured in in the anime style. So that was really, really cool. So yeah, I think this episode overall, while it wasn't like the most exciting episode, you know, not like too much happened. It, it was a lot of Kumurasaki walking. I think the style of it, the colours, the, it was adapted really well from the manga. Apart from that one little thing with Orochi just... Being like, he's a zone. So excited to see that Caribou cover story. It's great. Hopefully we get a few more of them. For me, personally, really enjoyed it. Very stylish episode. Sounds, nice tease, good pacing. Go to. Hey, so thanks for watching. What did you think? Let me know about it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, maybe give it a like. And if you really liked it, why not subscribe? You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Oh, and here's a related video you might enjoy, and something more fresh. I've been Higassin, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!